Ugandan musician and legislator Robert Changulani, also known as Bobby Wine, has been named as one of Time magazine's 100 young rising stars who are impacting the future of politics, business and science in the world. Wine, who has expressed his intention to run in Uganda's 2021 presidential election, uses music as a centerpiece for his politics and activism. He alleges uh, to VOS Jackson Bungani that President Yoweri Museveni's government is increasing pressure on his grassroots people power movement by using the country's security apparatus to go after members of the organization. Since you, uh, that incident in Arua, uh, where you ended up in jail uh, and tortured, I believe, there had been such a, a reaction from the international community uh, about uh, your story, uh, but also in general how Ugandan police treats protesters. Have you seen any changes since then? Well, the only change was, has been the heightening of uh, the oppression. Uh, as a person, of course, it in a way guaranteed my staying alive, apart from the brutalization and uh, constant physical and psychological torture. Um, the regime has, in a way, backed off my life and uh, that explains why I'm still alive. Mm. However, so many people that are not lucky enough to have international and national media attention, attention right. on them have suffered so much. Some have been abducted and they show up dead or uh, totally tortured. Recently, a fellow musician who goes by the name Ziggy Wine was abducted mm. by who we, support, who we um, suspect to be security agencies. He went missing for a few days only to show up with his eye plugged out and he was left there for dead. And in the, he indeed uh, succumbed to his torture wounds and he passed away. Mm. Uh, many border border riders have been knocked, run over by police uh, deliberately. Um, when I was coming from court and even when a fellow uh, artist was coming back to the country. And the most recent has been uh, the abduction of one lady called Zulaika Narukenge and she showed up uh, narrating despicable things that were done to her and uh, the attack on her dignity as a woman. These so, are all members of People these Power? These are all members of the People Power movement. Mm. So there has been a very deliberate attack mm. on the people. That Targeting the other individuals that are not very well known. Sure, exactly. Some so as, as I mean, this is uh, what, a year and a half out before the next election in 2021, which you're going to stand as, do you think this gets worse as it gets closer to election time? Sure, sure. Um, we know that it's going to get worse. President Museveni is known to use violence and indeed we project that is going to unleash a lot of uh, violence on the people of Uganda. And that explains why we constantly beseech the international community, the international media, and all friends of Uganda and all friends of humanity to kindly put their focus on the people of Uganda because uh, we know that uh, injustice flourishes uh, in the darkness. Mm. So the more we have uh, uh, the focus of the world, on Uganda and the goings on in Uganda, that alone might, uh, in a way, um, help to, to limit the, the, the operations. But also, mm. uh, it has been our request uh, all along to the international community, the organization that work with, with Uganda, the governments that work with Uganda to hold the, uh, the, the administration in Uganda accountable and make uh, the observation of uh, the rule of law and human rights, a precondition for cooperation. That was Ugandan artist and legislator Bobby Wine. In Tuesday's part two of his interview, Bobby Wine, who is on a North American tour, talks about the role of the Ugandan diaspora in his country's political future. Now for more on Uganda's political atmosphere, I'm joined in the studio by His Excellency Mal Sabuja Katende, the Ugandan ambassador to the United States. Ambassador Katende, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you very much. And now, respect and greetings to the viewers. Right. Now, Ambassador, your reaction to Bobby Wine when he says that uh, the Ugandan government has increased pressure on his people power movement and continues to torture the opposition? First of all, let me thank you for hosting me here. 
Uh, secondly, to inform you and the viewers that Uganda is a peaceful and stable country. It is not the Uganda Honorable Chagula is portraying. We have been growing at over 6% in our economy. We have businesses from the U.S. Recently, there is Aglis, a U.S. company in Uganda, the largest producers of grain and exporters. We have tourists going up. So that's not the Uganda Chagulan is talking about. Now, about the pressure, I think he's confusing things. The problem with those of Honorable Chagulan and uh, the other opposition is to confuse democracy with violence. Uganda is committed to a free and fair democratic system. So, so when you say that, do you see that the opposition really has a political space to gather, to yes. um, meet, you know, their supporters? Because the, not long ago, the long-time lead, opposition leader, Kiza Besige, was also, also said he was attacked by police when he wanted to meet with his people uh, for an anniversary of the formation of his political party, FDC. The, the issue here is for the politicians in Uganda, especially those from the opposition, to hide behind demonstrations, to hide behind the notions of freedom, to cause insurrection. That is a problem. They don't want to abide by the law. They want to act beyond the law so that they get Sympathy. So are you telling me that the Uganda government provides space for political dissent, oh, for yes. op opposition? Exactly. Chagulani is one of the successful persons economically, and many others like him. Politically, he has been able to go to parliament. Socially, he came from a ghetto. He's now in parliament, meaning that the country has space for anybody who works very hard to excel. But the law is the law. Whatever they want to do, if it is politics, if it is business, it has to be done within the law. And they want to flout the law. That is a problem. All right, Ambassador, let's move on to uh, regional issues where Uganda hosted uh, President Salva Kiir and his political rival, Riek Machar, uh, as they requested to extend, you know, the formation of a new government for 100 days. Does Uganda believe that the two leaders will be able to form a united government in about 100 days? Uh, just before that, mm -hmm. he talked about elections. Yeah. Now, elections in Uganda are no-brainer. Okay. It is something known. People know they will go for elections. People would contest. Anybody, even Chagura, you can contest. No, no problem. Now, regarding the role we are playing, it's very critical because we have got programs with the U.S. We have programs on fighting terrorism. That's why we are in Somalia, and we are working very well with the government of US. In the region, we are playing a very big role. People may just look at it as something very far, but it's very big to keep the region peaceful. Sudan, South Sudan has been a problem, and my president has been playing a very positive role to bring together those parties. And uh, the current the current program is that uh, these people will come together again and we push the country forward. So you're very hopeful. We'll be watching for both the next year, the 2021 politics and what's going to happen in the region. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador, for coming on Africa 54. Thank you very much and uh, thank you to all the viewers. And I want to assure them that Uganda is the place to go. All right, Ambassador Mao Sebuja Katende is Ugandan ambassador to the United States. You're watching Africa 54. We'll be right back.